Hi everyone, welcome back to Forever in High School. It's me, Kirsten. Today I am going to talk about my bathroom procedure. I'm filming at night again because I just got off of work. I work a second job besides teaching. Don't mind Lilu, she's always gonna be in the background somehow. I got a lot of positive responses from a video I did a few weeks ago where I talked about how I start the beginning of my classes. So I thought, why don't I talk about another procedure that I have found success with, and that procedure is bathroom and water. If you're new here, I'm a high school teacher. I'm pretty sure you could have guessed that since my name is forever in high school. What I'm about to tell you is something that works for ninth graders, for my ninth graders, if you are an elementary school teacher, I don't know how this could help you because there's a lot of responsibility that students have to have in order to complete this procedure. So this might not be appropriate for your age group that you teach. When I was student teaching, of course, I did what a lot of teachers probably do in the 21st century now that we have YouTube. I went on YouTube and I tried to find some classroom management tips and I came across a couple that worked for those teachers and even in my first year of teaching, which we all know how that was if you watch my other video, bathroom was one of those things that I still did not have the hang of yet. I pretty much adopted what my mentor teacher did for her procedure and I didn't really change anything about it. I naively thought, eh, I'll just take what she did and it'll be fine, it'll work for me. And honestly, it wasn't that bad. So this is what I told my ninth graders my first year of teaching. It's really simple. You grab your planner, you sign my name, so I don't have to worry about signing out my name every minute of class time and then you raise your hand and you ask if you can go to the bathroom and I will let you know if it's an appropriate time and then you take your planner you write the time that you left you leave and then you come back make sure you come back within five or six minutes and that was all I told them you know I think the only grief that I had was of course the interruptions as a teacher you're always gonna have kids that interrupt you during a lesson during the middle of class and ask you, Miss, can I go to the bathroom? <laughs> and so I had a couple of those, but it honestly was not something that I was worried about as much as all the other stuff that I had to deal with that year. <laughs> but still, after that first year, I wanted to change all the things that needed to be changed and I wanted to form better procedures so that I would never run into the same problems ever again. So the bathroom procedure was definitely on that list. So last year, my second year, I created a different bathroom procedure that was totally different. I no longer had my students use their planners to sign out the time and the name. Here's what I did and here's what I hope to continue to do once we get back to school physically. The first 10 minutes of class, you can't go to the bathroom. The last 10 minutes of class, you can't go to the bathroom. All you have to do is stand up from your desk quietly, walk on over to the front of the room where we have this wall and on that wall, there is a simple, cheaply made whiteboard DIY'd by yours truly. And by DIY, I mean it's one of those sheet protectors and then inside that sheet protector is a white paper inserted. That's a whiteboard. So they walk up to this whiteboard and then they write their name on that whiteboard. They take the pass, then they leave. And they have to be back within six minutes and then when they come back all they have to do return the pass wipe their name off the whiteboard and have a seat and that's my bathroom procedure it went so well this past year this is why i said in the beginning of the video that this bathroom procedure might not be 
fit for elementary school students because it totally puts the responsibility on the student. It gives them an opportunity to be independent, to make sure that they follow the rule, they follow those boundaries. And I'm not gonna lie, there were some times that some students did not follow that rule so I would catch them right before they start writing their name on the whiteboard and I would say oh so and so it's eight minutes before class ends so I'm sorry you can't go to the bathroom right now and even when that did happen it didn't bother me and it didn't bother them either the student would just be like look at the clock oh sorry miss it was never something that they found offensive, they never gave me attitude about it. It's something that like you can still correct them. That's another thing too, if you're a new teacher watching this, when you have procedures, you want to make sure that the student knows the procedure so well. And even when they do forget or they fall off, you can just correct them. You shouldn't scold them, you shouldn't make a big deal out of it, you just have them um, correct their mistake. There shouldn't be any consequences involved because it's not a rule or an expectation. Even in those moments when I did have to correct students for making a mistake, it didn't cause me any stress. Now, when I first developed this procedure, I did envision some problems with it. One of them was because the students have to write their own names on this whiteboard, I was thinking, hmm, what could go wrong? What if they write inappropriate names or what if they write a swear word or what if they draw something inappropriate or something, you know, anything can go wrong, right? 100% of the time, those kids wrote their names. I think there were a couple of times when students put like a nickname. I had this student, he looked up to LeBron James so instead of putting his own name he would put LeBron and I was okay with it because you know it wasn't inappropriate everyone knew who was in the bathroom what I love about this procedure is that the students have to hold themselves accountable so they put their own name on there so not only do I know where they're at but that all the other students in the class know oh so and so is in the bathroom that's why he or she is not here in our group helping us. So that's what I really like about this procedure too. Another thing that I thought would be problematic with this procedure is sometimes the students do not come back within six minutes. Okay, not sometimes. A lot of the times my students do not come back within six minutes. Usually, you know, maybe average would be 10 minutes. There was like one time, maybe two times when this student came back like after 15 minutes and like that's way too long bro so when this kind of thing happens again you don't scold them you don't give them like a consequence or anything what i did was i simply just found some time to pull them on the side and ask them if everything was okay like maybe they were in the bathroom for that long because they were having problems or maybe they were in the bathroom that long because they had to maybe talk to their parent on the phone and there's an emergency or something and if you build relationships with students they're gonna tell you the truth. So there were a couple of times when I did have students tell me the truth and they were like, sorry miss, I was just walking around campus. I needed to walk around cause my butt hurt from sitting for hours. And I don't find that a big deal either. I think about it this way. Why do we have this bathroom procedure? How is this going to affect them in the real world and when they have a job? Teaching is my job. And when there's a staff meeting and I have to she she really bad, I'm not gonna just hold it. If I really have to go, I'm going to go. And no one can tell me otherwise. No one is gonna be like, excuse me, Kirsten, we're not done with the meeting. You have to sit back down until we're done. If a student has to go, just let them go. About the 10 minutes in and the 10 minutes out boundary, I've only had maybe a couple of students where they actually asked me, Miss, I know it's five minutes before class ends, but this is an emergency. Especially the girls in my classes. I know what that's all about. I'm a woman, I get it. Don't wanna relive those days. Of course, I would take that into consideration and I would just say, oh yeah, yeah, go, go, go. With any procedure, you need to put the students at the forefront, no matter what. Sometimes rules are going to be broken. Sometimes, 
procedures are going to be modified depending on the situation at the time. And as long as you form those close bonds with your students, it shouldn't be a huge deal. If I notice that a student uses my class a lot to go to the bathroom, like often, like every single day, again, that's when I pull them aside and I talk to them and try to get to the bottom of the why. Let the kids go to the bathroom, everybody. Just let them go to the bathroom. I've seen some teachers post online that they limit how many times a student goes to the bathroom. I don't believe in that. I think if a student has to go to the bathroom, as long as they follow these bullet points, then that shouldn't be a problem. Let me know what your bathroom procedure is. Not your personal bathroom procedure. You know what I mean, right? Bye.